A uh, really important thing, now that you know the product rule and the quotient rule and the chain rule, as you grow more and more rules, it's like, well, cool, I can do more stuff, but it becomes just as important to be able to choose when is the, or which tool is most appropriate in which situation. Um, raise your hand if you use the question rule for this question. Hands up. Okay, thank you, hands down. I gave the question to you in a form that makes it easy to use the question rule. It, it's a quotient. There is, though, another rule you could have used. I'm not saying whether it's easier or not, but look at it again carefully. X over e to the x. Do you agree I could have written this as x e to the minus x? You see what I've done there? I've used index laws to say, oh, that e to the x on the bottom, I can, uh, as I got taught when I was like in year eight, I can cross the line, change the sign, right? So it becomes a, a negative index. That's what means it's on the bottom, okay? Now this guy, you don't need the quotient rule for. You can use the product rule. And generally, I will do everything I possibly can to avoid the quotient rule, because it's gross. I mean, it works, but it's long, it's error prone. So if you can avoid it, do it. And um, often there are other situations where don't just look at it and immediately say, oh, here's my first answer, right? In fact, that's one of the big things. You know when you do a test and you're like, I ran out of time. Have you ever had that feeling before? Like I had three questions at the end I couldn't do. It's often not because you were slow, it's because perhaps you just chose a method that took longer. Some methods are longer than others, okay? All right, so can I please ask you, if you haven't already, to make this heading? Why are we looking at all of these derivatives of an exponential functions? Because we want to use that as a stepping stone to differentiating the logarithmic function. What's the relationship between the exponential function, y equals e to the x, for example, and the logarithmic function? What's the relationship? Say that again, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit like the relationship between addition and subtraction, or the relationship between squaring and taking the square root. Uh, we call these inverses, right? So you're looking at the same reality, but from two different perspectives, okay? So what we're going to do is um, have a look at how to differ differentiate the logarithmic function. We're going to kind of do it twice. The first time, I'm just going to give you the bird's eye view. And then, honestly, that's the part that um, the advanced course requires you to look at. Um, that's all you need and then you can just start using it. That's what we're going to cover first and then if you want um, you can just have a go at the exercises and get comfortable using it. However, I'm then going to hit pause as some of you guys go on with the exercise and I'm going to offer to those of you who want it, I'm going to offer to those of you who want it an explanation for why all of this actually is true. When you come out of this you might feel like, yeah but like, there was a bit of hand wavy, like, is that really true? It looks true, but is it really true? Um, this is not a proof, okay? I will give you the proof, but it's not within the scope of the course. So that's just for those of you who really want to know, who, like me, are driven sort of crazy just to accept things because someone tells you so. Um, you actually know enough to prove it for yourself, and I will give you that explanation. So let's start from the top. We're going to do this just like with sine and cos. We're going to start thinking about it visually through the graph, okay? So let's consider the graph of y equals the natural log of x. We're only interested in this case, just like over here, where you've got the log that has a base of what? What are all the bases here? E, e thank you. So L and X, of course, is our abbreviation for log base E of x. You can write either of them. I am just lazy, so I'm going to write the shorter one. Now, um, I don't need this to be a beautiful graph. I just want the rough sense. Can I ask you guys, use your finger, just hold it up in the air. Can you? Show me what the shape of this graph roughly looks like. Can you just draw it in the air in front of your face? How would you do it? I'm just looking for some motion in your fingers, okay? Uh, yeah, okay, all right. Oh, I'm seeing a variety of shapes. Okay, this is interesting. All right, I don't, I don't know what on earth you're doing today, but let me help you. And I'd love you to have this drawn as well underneath where you've written this. So draw yourself a set of axes. Um, the log curve looks like this. It's a very nice, easy uh, graph to sketch, you just have like, wee there, one, one little arc there, okay? And um, this is the rough shape of it, and there are a few important features that we should put onto this, right? For, for starters, there's an intercept, an x-intercept. Does anyone know what the x-intercept is? What value is it? Mm. One. Ashani? One. It's one, very good, okay? Um, remember I told you that logs and exponentials, they're two things looked at from opposite points of view. Just like the exponential curves, they have a y-intercept of 1, the log curve has an x-intercept of 1. Can I say that again? Exponential curve, y-intercept of 1, 
log curve, x intercept of 1. Okay, that's good. Um, there's also another thing missing over here. What's missing over here that I should draw on? Periods. Mm, this is not a periodic function. It's not a trig function. It just sort of does that. It doesn't repeat. What else am I missing? I'm missing an asymptote, right? This curve, it approaches the y-axis, but it never gets there. Okay, so we should all go ahead and we should draw this vertical asymptote in. What's its equation? Or close. It is something equals 0, but it's on the y-axis, so it's, it's x equals 0. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. We could put up more information, but all that we need is already on here. Now, on the basis of just that very, very simple picture, there's at least three things, at least three things that we can see about the derivative of this graph. The derivative tells us about the gradient, right? So what I want you to look at is this graph here. And OK, here's our, here's our first thing. So the log curve is increasing, which means that the derivative is positive. Very good. The derivative is positive, so I might say uh, if y equals log x, I'm going to say dy on dx, it's going to be greater than zero, it's positive, and it always is positive. It never like, turns around, it never stops, it um, is always going to be going up. Okay, that's really good. What else can you tell me about the derivative? Is there anything else you can tell me? It has numbers in it. It's got numbers in it, but then again, all derivatives have numbers in it. Can you tell me something specific to this derivative? Ishan, did you have a thought? Positive. Okay, so I've got the fact that it's, it's positive. That's good. Uh, and I guess we'd get that from you know putting these um, plus signs. It's going up, going up, going up. Increasing, as Serang said, is the exact word. Um, let me ask you, how much is it increasing by? Is it always increasing at the same amount? No. Is it one one? Hmm. Now we don't we didn't have a heap amount of detail on here, right? Okay, so so it's curved, right? It's curved. It is going up. But I noticed that like if for example you um do this to your page, right? If I cover up most of the graph and just show this little bar, part over here, right? So if I cover up this part and you can only see this part, do you agree that this section's quite steep at the beginning? But then as you go further and further to the right, it's, it, if you look at that part, for example, that's not steep, is it? It's much shallower. It's not a stationary point. That would mean it stops. But in fact, if I kept drawing this, it would keep on going up and up and up, but just really, really slow. Okay. Now, what that means is the derivative, right? It decreases. It gets smaller. And it does that forever and ever and ever. It never like goes faster again. You know the x cubed graph, which sort of like, picks up? This never picks up, right? So it's going to decrease forever. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. It's going to get closer and closer to zero. It's never going to pass zero, though, because as you told me here, it's greater than zero. Right, very good. OK, one last question for you. And it's kind of a weird thing, so I'm going to highlight it for you, because it's asking a question about where the derivative doesn't appear. Can you tell me about this part of the graph? Uh, we didn't, I didn't even draw that part of the Cartesian plane. What's going on over here for y equals log x? Oh, that's the what? Why, isn't, why isn't y equals log x over here? Because dy and dx are greater than 0. So dy and dx tells us about gradient. Yeah. That's about how steep or shallow it is. But the graph doesn't even exist over here. What's going on, Shambhavi? What? So it's the boundary. I don't know what else, but it's like the boundary. We have a name for this, right? When a function has a boundary, it like stops somewhere. It exists only in a particular place. It starts with d. What's that called? D domain, right? So the domain of log x, what is the domain of log x? What's the domain? Where can log x exist? X is greater than zero, right? You, can you get to x equals zero? No, you can't because of the asymptote, right? So because this graph only exists for x is greater than zero, the derivative also only exists for x greater Does that make sense? Okay. So it only exists for x is greater than 0. Okay, um, on the right-hand side of the graph is a, a colloquial way you could say that. All right, now, I want you to think, is there a graph that you know about that it always stays positive, um, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller forever, um, and I only want it to exist on, on one part of the graph? What would that look like? Hmm. Now, we can start to piece this together. Let me show you on here. I'm going to use uh, my other color. OK? It's positive over here, and it's very positive. So I'm going to say the, the gradient is going to be somewhere up here. It's going to be high and positive, because it's very steep. And then it sort of slows down, 
Do you agree with that? Like it's, it's starting to get slower and, and shallower and it's going to keep on slowing down. It's going to keep on slowing down. The further I go, the more it slows down. Do you agree? It, it never gets to actual zero. But what, what shape do you get if you join those dots? Do you, rec do you recognize this shape? It starts with, um, starts with an H. What is this guy? This is the hyperbola, right? This, this graph I've just drawn, is 1 over x, OK? So this is our conclusion from just looking at it visually, right? Our visual intuition, it tells us that the derivative of log x, it is, what do we say it was? The hyperbola, what's its equation? 1 over x. One over x. Y plus one. But, 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 be careful. 1 over x, right? You don't have to draw this. 1 over x, where does that exist? What is the domain of 1 over x? Well, it exists over here. That's the part I've drawn. But is that the only place it exists? No, it, goes on. no, it also exists on the other side, right? Does this ring a bell? Does that look like, yeah, I've seen this before. OK. So we actually don't want all of the graph. We only want the part that's positive. OK. So this is the result that we need to be using. Um, put a big box around that. We haven't improved it, but we can still use it. If you get given a log function, you now know what its derivative is. It's 1 over x, but it's this, this part of 1 over x. Okay.